Have you ever taken a recovery day and on your next workout you just feel stiff and like you're not able to switch it back on and get back into the flow? Well, it's probably because you're doing your recovery days wrong. Like I have done many, many times in the past and still sometimes do from time to time, I do my recovery days wrong. And it ends up being not as an effective recovery day than it could be. And this is really true with any type of workout that you're doing, whether you're lifting weights, whether you're doing calisthenics, whether you're running ultra marathons, or you're just doing push-ups and sit-ups or whatever you can do and you're sore, these three things have really, really helped me recover efficiently and maximize the time that I am actually putting in for my recovery days. Okay, so the first thing that really changed my recovery day was making a recovery day into active recovery. So whether that be running or walking, just making sure that you're always active on your recovery day and not just being a sedentary piece of crap sitting on the couch, just kind of trying to melt away into oblivion. Now, if you do need a full reset, and this is more of a mental thing than a body thing, or if you're actually injured, then yeah, become a couch potato and just drift away. But if you're trying to recover and you're gonna be continuing on to your training plan, try to be active during your recovery days because it keeps all the blood flowing, it keeps everything in motion. And anecdotally, for myself, it makes me feel like I'm just recovering way, way more than when I'm just sedentary, just sitting around. So this was very apparent on my first 24 hour race, the Mount Sparta 24 hour, where we were just going up the same mountain over and over and over again for 24 hours. And that day I was absolutely destroyed, but it was also my anniversary weekend. So my wife wanted to go and do a bunch of hikes and do a bunch of like outdoor stuff that same weekend. So, I got to crash out after the race and the very next day we were supposed to go on a easy, easy two mile hike. Well, I have two daughters and on the first couple steps, my daughter just absolutely ate shit into the dirt and refused to walk that rest of the hike. So for about two to three miles, because we got lost, of course, I was carrying a baby and really working 24 hours less than completing that 24 hour race where I was just going up and down, up and down the mountain. Even the day after that, we went on a little hike and probably after those 48 hours of hiking and moving, I felt awesome. I felt amazing. I felt like I could actually get back to running within three days of my first 24 hour race. So that extra movement that I normally wouldn't have done after a race, it really ramped up my recovery and I ended up recovering way, way faster. Of course, this is anecdotally, it's gonna be different for everybody. But for me, I've been noticing my body really likes movement on recovery days. Now during this marathon buildup, on my recovery days, I usually run two times and it's usually around 45 minutes each but it's just keeping the blood flowing, usually in the morning and then once at night. And I've been hitting about a hundred mile weeks and my legs have never felt better on any of my other training plans. So on your recovery days, make sure you do not drift away in oblivion. Give it a shot, go out for a walk. If that's all you can muster, go and do some foam rolling, go and do some cross training some kickboxing, some weightlifting, whatever you can muster up, but make sure that you're staying active during your recovery days. All right, so number two is definitely gonna be nutrition. So 100% we're gonna have to be able to put in as much clean fuel as possible on your days off, on your recovery days, so then you have enough calories, you have enough protein, you have enough whatever it may be to be fully fueled and start that rebuilding process. And this doesn't mean that you're just gonna go out and just destroy a bunch of McDonald's, just funnel in as much food as possible, but what you're really gonna do is funnel in as much clean, clean food as possible. So I like to keep it as simple as possible while I'm trying to refeed and refuel 
on my recovery days. So just simple to, <laughs> I'm Filipino and Filipino as fuck. So two cups of rice, about six to eight ounces of top sirloin steak, which is like super cheap that I just cook. I cook giant steaks on like Monday and throughout the week. And then I just make sure that I have a bunch of meat ready so then I can just shovel it in my mouth as quick as possible. So along with the food that you're actually shoveling in your face, you also want to make sure that you're accompanying it with a lot of hydration. So sometimes I probably almost overdo it with liquid when I'm actually on a recovery day. I try to put as much liquid as possible because once again, I am a super, super heavy sweater. So I'll try to get around five liters, five to six liters of fluid in me. And one thing that has really helped me get enough calories in and making sure that I'm not eating a bunch of crap is just tracking my food. So I use a food app. There's a bunch of food apps out there online that you can actually use. And just writing down everything that you eat will illuminate what you're missing in your diet or what you need to add to your diet or if you're actually eating way more out to eat or drunk than you actually thought, just doing that. And you don't have to be religious about it. You don't have to be crazy about it. Like do it for a week or two and see where your actual empty holes or your gray areas are. So then you can start filling them in for your recovery days, for your everyday eating. And that has really, really helped me out just to make sure that I'm getting enough calories, I'm getting those micro and macro nutrients, and then I can start playing with my diet to see how I can actually improve it for my actual runs, for my recovery, for after a race, for carb loading, for right before a race. And it really helps you start understanding what you're actually putting in your mouth and how it's actually affecting your diet. It's really cool going back onto your training logs and seeing how you felt and then going back to your food, like your little food journal and seeing how it affects that diet. But now I'm starting to ramble, definitely 100% number two on your recovery days, focus on getting in as much clean nutrition and hydration as possible. So you're nice and stored up and then you'll have all the energy that you need for your next run, but 100% Try to get in as much clean fuel as possible on your recovery days. All right, number three. Ugh. This is one of the most important things. It's actually relaxing and recovering. Don't go out and say, oh, I have enough time and do a bunch of stressful things and just get more stressed out than you actually would actually running. Just relax. Let your endocrine system reset, let everything reset and feel like you're hungry and ready to get your workout done. And this is one thing that I've been really freaking working on because when I have extra time, my brain goes, oh, I need to do this and I need to do this and I need to do this and I need to do this. And I end up being a lot more crazy than I actually would have done if I actually had a workout for the day. So... I've been making it a actual theme to actually relax, try to let the life stressors just melt away, let everything reset and enjoy the day. Whether that be walking with my two baby girls or just laying on the couch and enjoying it, you know, get your movement done for the day, get your active recovery done for the day and then just stop thinking about running. Stop thinking about everything that makes you like so stressful. If you can, of course, I know people's lives are different and there's a lot of stressors in life, but if you can try to be the least amount of stress as possible, that is the best for recovery. That is the best to reset and be hungry for your next workout. So whatever you have to do to relax, do it because it does really help your recovery. If you are just chill and you're just hanging out on the couch, grab your wooby and just uh, let yourself melt into space. So those were the three big things that I focus on during my recovery days. That's turning recovery days into active recovery, focusing on getting clean nutrition in as much as possible, and then just reducing stress and trying to relax as much as possible. With those three big things, you're gonna be able to recover a lot better. Try it out yourself, see what really works for you, 
And then once you have those three big pillars taken care of, then you can start adding in all the extra stuff. You can start doing the ice baths and the sauna and blah, 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 and start getting electrical currents put into your head and probing and shocking your brain. And then it's like, oh, I'm recovering, doing crack. Okay, don't do that. But you can start playing with all the extra recovery things once you have those three fundamentals taken care of. Also, along with the stress thing, make sure that you're getting your sleep in because sleep is 100% one of the most important things for recovery. But I'll leave you with this. Make sure that you're going out there, chipping away, becoming an average savage. Remember, don't run yourself ragged. Don't freaking just keep grinding yourself into the ground. Give yourself those opportunities to rebuild so then you can keep charging up that fucking hill and becoming an average savage. Let's get out there and let's fucking do it. Let's go.